as African American women, we're a bit more dramatic. And that you go to the doctor and you complain and you complain and you complain and you're not taken serious because you cried wolf the entire pregnancy. That ain't me, boo. I don't know what you're talking about, but go ahead. I didn't say you. I just said as as African-American women, we want to also make sure you're being serious with your doctor and not playing the game so I can take you off work. Because then we see you 25 times in the pregnancy it's hard to believe that there's a true problem when there's a true problem. It is very irresponsible yes. and shameful mm. for you as a doctor to sit down here and talk about how black women fake their pregnancy pains and they call, they cry wolf. And have not Especially had one baby. you who have not had a child. It's just disgusting and it's shameful. Huh. But let's get into this whole mess with Dr. Jackie. It's Mary. And, and we invite you guys to like, subscribe, and comment down below because I just think it's so irresponsible. Black women who have been experimented on, who pain is like pushed to the side, and it's so systematic who are because not sometimes believed people when who don't believe, pain. like it's and the thing is, it's systematic, meaning that all of this stuff is taught through the books. Like doctors, sometimes they like even like with the police department, and then also. Like with um, the healthcare. doctor books, like the healthcare, like they are taught, like these are put in their books, like certain medicines you should give to somebody who is Caucasian. Yes. And sometimes you should give some half-half medicines to somebody who is black because they have a higher pain tolerance or whatever or the case may be. Or, or high They make blood excuses pressure. for the they reason make, why you they need should to get, give this kind of medication to, you know, but you know so it's kind yeah. of it's a systematic racist racist system yes. with like the health care and all this stuff and it everything is. and it stuff is. so that, that is that's, all, there. that's a it known fact and there, she was sure. a nurse so she also knows this yeah. and i have heard stories yeah so my thing is for you as a black doctor you yeah. have not even had one i wouldn't child say most yet. of the time i did work in that industry but it's there yeah it's there it cannot and actually it's what, I, what, I, what, what I'm even hearing from, I've been out of this, this, this system for six years, but what I hear from even nurses, you know, my friends who are still in that system now, oh my goodness, it has gotten worse than when I was there. Six, it has even gotten worse, and I'm just like, whoa, how did that get worse? But I mean, and then even for me, there. like as a fashion designer, you know, like mm -hmm. we are kind of taught in the fashion industry to mm -hmm. like, you know, because... Like, I don't say, I don't want to say fat phobia or whatever, or like, you know, against fat people. Yeah. But the thing is, they kind of teach you to always work with skinny models. Like, we never even knew how to draw plus size models. Like, they just didn't teach that. Yeah. Like, they only taught you how to draw yeah. skinny models and yeah. stuff. And they always taught you that it's best to work with skinny models. So, wow. this is all stuff that is See, taught. I know that. Right. So, I it's all, cool. so, it's all taught yeah. um, in the. It's, it's these, like a system these thing. systems. Yeah. So my thing is, maybe you're not aware of it, but for you to say it as a black woman, that, that they fake their pains and they cry wolf. Like black women have Because they don't want to go to work. My black thing is, women who can stay you working, if, like even what? Even if they do that sometimes, what is the issue? Yeah. We have to go home to a man break? who probably is not paying the bills. Or I'm having to work two, three, four jobs. I'm you having to come home, cook and clean, take care of these babies. Probably dealing, still probably they're dealing with some useless man who will not or also help. You're single. Maybe yeah, or you're, you're also single. a single mom. You know what I'm which saying? I was and working two jobs right. and having to homeschool at the same time and mm -hmm. getting two to shoot. If I got four hours of sleep a day, um, I was it's like, bad. oh wow, that is great. I finally got my full hour of hours of sleep. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You gotta work your two jobs. You're homeschooling, so it's like the kids come first. You gotta take them to all their extracurricular activities, like yeah. all of that. Um, it's a lot, but and then for you to say, and then why wouldn't these women who are so stressed out, black women, why wouldn't they be feeling extra pain again? And you've never had a child, so you can't really see. Excuse my French, you really can't see shit. Ugh. Like, how would you know? You have not birthed the child. Yeah. And until you do that, you cannot speak on what a pregnant woman goes through. Yeah. Like, and nobody even can. Even I can't speak children. on it because I haven't had a child. Yeah. So, but even if she has had children, you're not in that woman's body. So if she comes to you and says, I'm feeling pain, 
listen, I, I, like if I have a doctor that I saw out there said this, I'm never I going promise to you, I'm never going there again. Never. I will never be there. So you have just lost. I hope, I hope black women are standing strong. And if you are her patient, find yourself another doctor. Just find yourself another doctor. And some women have even came up with their it's stories about awful. how Dr. Jackie, one woman came and said that she only saw Dr. Jackie once or twice in her 39 weeks of pregnancy. That is horrible. Another woman um, that is said horrible. that she um, induced her labor two weeks before she was due yeah. because she felt like her baby had a low birth weight. That was, and horrible. she said she stayed three or four days um, with contractions trying to give birth but that, all of this that stuff is actually so, so people, horrible to hear it really actually is horrible to hear people I, are coming out of the are coming out I and talking about this doctor i cannot even imagine i know for myself i don't know how it will feel and and i just want to say sorry to all these women who have been through this it just makes me want to cry because it just does i cannot even imagine I cannot even imagine. I gotta get myself together. I didn't even realize why it's even hitting me. I can't imagine you being pregnant. So vulnerable. You know, pregnancy is such a vulnerable time. Yeah. It's such a vulnerable time. Like, your body shuts down, it starts acting odd. <laughs> like, there's a whole person in here. It almost feels as though you You're got an pretty. alien in your body. You have these little twinges and stuff, you know? And a lot of times, you know, when you're feeling pain during pregnancy, especially for myself after I had a miscarriage before I had my rainbow baby here, like, you know, it's like even if you feel the pain, yeah, I, I really don't want to go to the to the doctor so because you're worried because about you're what worried. It is. Like, what if what, what if, if the go baby's and then dying tell me or... the baby is not viable and stuff yeah. like that? So when I finally come to you, and you and don't for you hear to say, me. Oh, you're just trying to have a time off from work. Do you know what that does to a woman who's already in that vulnerable state? You idiot. <laughs> God. Just I can't even imagine. You know, I had a wonderful Indian doctor with you. And I saw her every, all, all the time. Uh, we were so crazy, me and your dad at the time. Like, we had written all this stuff. We want music. We want, you know, him to... The baby never to leave his sight so we can make sure you know, it's the right baby. It's the right baby. <laughs> and we don't want any episiotomy. We don't want any epidural. You know, we want, you know, as soon as the baby's born, for him to whisper in her ear, you know, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, which means there's, there's no love but Allah and yeah. Muhammad is his messenger, right? And he needs to do that as soon as the baby's head comes out. And the doctor was like, you mm -hmm. want, want him to do it there or let me pull the baby out? No, no. If the baby, the head come out, let him stay there. She's like, but the... <laughs> and then she was just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> she brought us, and I still have it, all the stuff we wrote. You know, oh, you we, I still have it, yes. Birth plan. Oh. So she calls the nurse and says... Oh, here's your birth plan. <laughs> Doctor, I know they got a kick, that, kick out of that. And I brought it in. They made several copies. Oh, we're going to give some to the hospital. Okay, you really make sure. Make about a dozen. Give it to all the nurses. <laughs> but she allowed us to do that. And then when I had um, her brother, I had a, a female Caucasian doctor. And she was so gentle and so sweet. Um... And then, but I remember my first, so the first baby that I, the one that I lost when I had a miscarriage, the black doctor was a black woman. And in fact, she was my imam's, you know, who, who was like a reverend in the mosque, right? His wife um, told me about, she recommended this doctor. And she was a black woman, right? And she recommended this doctor who was also a black woman and she's like, listen, she, she, um, she was my mom's doctor. She was my doctor. She's all my children's doctor. Like this woman is solid gold. She was a woman in the community. I tell you, I don't know. Maybe the woman was, um, 
now when I think about, but no, probably not because that's the Imam's wife, so she's Muslim, right? Right. But I come in, and um, you know they're asking you about your history and all this stuff, and you know I put down you know that I, I had had an abortion, and and you know I was all covered up. I at that time I was covered up um, as a Muslim, and she was so judgmental, and she was so rough. I remember just her examining me. She was so incredibly mean and rough, like I felt violated. That's how rough she was. And I promise you, after that, I told uh, the sister who had recommended me to her, I told her just how rough she was. She was like, wow. But later on, she did tell me, you know something? I have actually heard that before about her. And yeah, sometimes she can be kind of cold. <laughs> but when she was recommending her, oh, she feel with braids and all this stuff. But she was so rough. Like, and it's so weird for a woman. You're going into another woman with your big ass speculum. And not even trying to get a smaller one or anything like that. Just, and just rough, just mean, just extra rough. And I have never, even to this day, Never had someone be like that during a gynecology exam. She was the only one. So, and she was a black woman. She was a black woman. And um, so I be your own. So I be your own damn people. As unfortunate it, it, as it, it is, it, it to was say, a, it was a shame. Like, but after that, yes, I I didn't go out of my way to find an Indian doctor. But that's who my insurance, whatever, and she was great. She was great. And after that, you know, I've had an African doctor, you know, our doctor in Godo. Yeah. She was, she was gentle. Oh, I, I love mean, her. Some patients did not like her at all. Well, because you know, she would she take a long time. She was mean, but Is she was one? sweet. Oh, no, no. You, the one that you have, you really like her, but she's African. The lady who... The one that went, we always talk to. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Dr. Koda. No, no, no. That's Dr. Leach. Oh, Dr. Leach. Dr. Oh. Leach is great. Dr. Leach is great. She's a doctor. If you are in she's Maryland, go to Dr. Leach. Oh, she's also. Awesome. Grade A, amazing. My goodness. And, and the thing is, yes, you're going to have to wait hours. You, you, you can come in there at 9 o'clock in the morning. You might not leave until 3, 4 o'clock. I don't care. In fact, guess what? Nobody cares. You'll be sitting there and everyone is waiting. Nobody is complaining. She has a little coffees, a little snacks, whatever. Nobody's complaining, but guess what? They know when they go to go see Dr. Leach, they gave the best. She, she is going and she's to gonna take hear you hours with you. She's going to ask you about everything, what's going on in your life, and all that stuff. She's going to take time for you. She's going to give you the things that you need, the stuff that you're asking everything for. Everything you request. Everything. Even if, if it's something that you requested that she's like, mm, I don't think so. But she's going to explain why. So it's like it's funny because as you are as, as patients leave, they will they will stop by to the other patients and say, "She is great. I know you might be, have been waiting here for a while, but she's phenomenal. Don't don't get upset because she is phenomenal." And and and, we, and you will hear patients say, "Oh, baby, I know. I've been here 20, 10, 15 I, years. Honey. I've been here. I I I know her, and it's okay." And you wait patiently. Oh, Doctor Leach. Dr. Katie Leach in Maryland. Largo, Maryland. Run. Run, Run to her. To her. <laughs> She'll be the best Maryland. doctor you've ever had. Yes. Like Annapolis Road, Maryland. She is awesome. L E A C H K A D I E. But that's the She's type great. of treatment that you should get from a doctor, especially a doctor. during your pregnancy. So, Dr. Jackie, just And she's from I'm Jamaica. Disgusted. Originally from Jamaica, actually. Dr. Oh. Leach. But Dr. Jackie, I'm just disgusted. Can't believe she's a doctor. But I can't believe unfortunately, she even said that. I don't know what you, was going on with you, what Dr. Possessed Jackie. possessed you to say that? You need to have some therapy. I don't know what's going on in your life. It's I don't not know an if you're excuse, stressed though, out. You're a doctor. Know, you're supposed to be taking care of these people, and you and this is how you think of them. But I would not know, be shocked if she goes out of business because I would never take my black booty over there but to go see her. But you know like, something? What I wish for Dr. Jackie is this. She can't be rehabilitated as far as I'm concerned. No. As no, old as you are, that. people you who know are why? old usually don't get better with you, time. They yeah, usually get they more set in their ways. Yeah, I know, but you know what it is? I, uh, what, I, what I hope for Dr. Jackie, 
I really hope Maybe that... Maybe when she has a child, she'll because, understand. Because you have been in this business, I want to say, first of all, you went to medical school for at least 10 years. Then you've been doing this, your practice. I don't know how long you've been doing your practice, doctor. But you know something? I, you know, I hope this was just a moment in your life that, you know what I'm saying? You just kind of lashed out at patients. And I really hope that you, you, you don't let your ego get in the way. Because doctors can be so proud sometimes. That you just humble yourself and just apologize to your patients. And apologize to black women in general. Because you really need to say that. Because if you, the black doctor, will say something about that, like black women, what do you want the Caucasian man or woman out there, or the Asian man or woman out there, or the Indian man or woman out, doctor out there, to think? They'll think, mm, well, you know something, they said it, so I better not listen to this patient. Right? I just hope it was one of those bleeps, you know, you're having a very hard day, just pissed at some patients or something going on in your life. You got to go get that therapy and then you got to make time for yourself in life and you got to eat right and you got to exercise and, and you have to do some meditation. Maybe do some sunning up there in Atlanta. You got to do something with your life, Dr. Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> so that you're not making these colossal mistakes that go up and a whole damn career and a whole da damn, you know, decade of study. So I really wish that this is just a bleep and you fix it. Black women are so incredibly forgiving. So incredible. I, I think that we are one of the most forgiving people on earth, honestly. Um, we're so incredibly forgiving and they will forgive you if you're genuine, but you gotta come out and be genuine about that because it's a little disgusting what you said. Yeah. Anyway. That's how I always feel. Yes, y'all, but it's Mary. And sorry, so sorry for those women, because I almost cried just thinking about the women who are pregnant right now, and she's their doctor. Please just, if she apologizes, let's just accept her back. I'm and not doing that, genuine, and I actually don't, because I, I would not recommend any woman, woman do that, because I mean, especially if I will go find another are, doctor if I can, but, I, but what I'm saying is There that, are patients who have suffered, and this is something that she has possibly inflicted on several different patients. I feel like the issue is with us, we're too damn forgiving, and that's why oh. people um, walk, sometimes walk all over us. I say, that's true. you do not want somebody like this who yeah. talks so badly about their own people, and then also goes and Your patient inflicts still, pain the on patient them. Still. So I would not recommend any woman go. HIPAA law so, to speak against <laughs> Patients like that. So I will not recommend any woman go and try to be forgiven and open up to Jack, Dr. Jack. Just as she sat down there to give her an apology, she seemed oh, she annoyed okay. that oh. she was even there giving the apology. So, no. I'm not oh. recommending no woman to sweep so under the rug. that has already happened. So you messed that up, even that, Jackie. Like, oh, it well. takes a different type of wickedness to go and be mean and mistreat a pregnant woman. Like, there's some karma that comes with that. So no, I'm not gonna be forgiving. Ask well, forgiveness. Obviously, she wasn't looking for forgiveness if she was all annoyed giving an apology. Well, yeah. I guess that didn't work. So hmm. next, anyway, next doctor. <laughs> it's and Mary, Emma. and we invite you guys to like, subscribe, and comment down.